Hi everyone, Simona here from Victor Twist. In today's tutorial, I would like to show you how you can create a Penrose triangle here in Illustrator. Now, the Penrose triangle is a really interesting geometric shape. It creates an optical illusion and is often used for logos and other artwork. So let's start right away. First, let's choose the Polygon tool. So in our toolbar, we're going to click and hold the Rectangle tool and then move all the way down to the Polygon tool. Now with it selected, we'll click once on the artboard. Here we have the Polygon pop-up menu. For this example, I'm setting the radius to 180 points and the sides to 3, which will give us an equal sized triangle. Now let's click OK. And since I have chosen the fill as a blue, my triangle is filled with a color right away. The next step is to create a stroke. So we want to switch the fill to a stroke. So let's just click our little arrows here. Then we're opening up our stroke panel and let's set it to about 60 points. We need a solid shape, so we need to outline our stroke. So let's go up to Object, Path, Outline Stroke. And now the fun part begins. We need to cut up our triangle so we can create a Penrose triangle out of our shape. In order to do that, we're going to use the pen tool. So let's switch the fill to the stroke. Let's choose the pen tool and then we're going to create lines so we can cut up our shape. Always make sure that you have your smart guides on because they can really help us. As you can see, I'm going to place a point here and I'm pressing and holding the shift key on the keyboard to create a straight line and I'll click on the other side. In order to see it better, let me switch the stroke to a bright color. We need two more of those lines, one to cut this part here and the other one to cut that part. So the easiest is to select our line that we've created. We'll go to Object, Transform and select Rotate. In our pop-up, we're going to set the angle to 120 degrees. Let's preview and then we press Copy. Then we can move it into place and then we're going to rotate it one more time. So back to Object, Rotate and this time we're going to set the angle to 60 degrees, press the preview and then press copy. Again, we're going to move it into place and then we're going to select all of our shapes, open up the Pathfinder panel and choose divide from our Pathfinder options. As you can see, we've cut the shape into pieces now. Now I'm going to select the shape and ungroup it. So let's select it, go to object, ungroup, and then I'm going to select the parts that I need to build up the Penrose triangle. So I've selected this row here. I'm going to drag them over to make a copy. Again, you can do this by holding the Shift and the Aldo Option key and then dragging it to the side. Then I'm going to open up my Pathfinder panel and let me drag it out. And I'm clicking the Shape Mode Unite. Next, we need to build up another shape. This shape will go onto the right side here. So I'm selecting the pieces that I need, dragging a copy over, and right away I'm going to unite them with the Pathfinder. Let's switch the fill color right away so we can see better what's happening. Then we're going to continue. I'm going to select the other pieces that I need. I'm going to create a copy of it and move it to the bottom, change the color, and then going back to the Pathfinder and uniting those shapes. I want to move it to the front, so let's go to Object, Arrange, and Bring to Front. Now we have the main shapes for our Penrose triangle but we have a few pieces missing. We need a piece for the top, the left, and the right. Since we have our shape here cut into pieces, we have the exact pieces that are missing, so all we need to do is drag a copy over, into the corners, left and right, and for the top. Now all we have to do is combine it again with the Pathfinder and the shapes. So this shape up here needs to be combined with the green, the shape here on the right needs to be combined with the blue and then the shape on the left here with the darker blue. Now we've created our Penrose triangle, but something seems odd. The corners are pointy, but we need them to be flat. All we have to do is select the shape and remove this anchor point here. We can do this by choosing the pen tool and when I hover over it, I get the minus sign and then I click and then I remove the point. The same I'm going to do with the bottom shape and of course with the shape on the left. And now we've created our Penrose triangle. In case we have some alignment issues, as you can see here, we just have to move 
our shape into place a little bit better, extend it with the direct selection tool, and then reunite them. Now let me hide this shape here and move our Penrose triangle here into the middle so we can see it better. Of course, we can add some effects to it. For example, if we select it and then open up the swatches panel, we can add a black stroke, increase it via the stroke panel, and set the cap to round. And then, because it is so much fun, we could also add some texture. The first thing we want to do is add a copy. So let's select all of our shapes, go to Edit, Copy, and then back to Edit, Paste in front. Then we're going to select our three shapes, and we'll make sure we turn off the stroke. Then in the Swatches panel, let's click the Flyout menu, go to Open Swatch Library, and Find Patterns. There we're going to choose Basic Graphics, and we're going to choose basic graphic dots. You want to look for this little pattern. It's called 0 to 100% dot gain. If you click it once, it will be added to your swatches panel. Then we're going to select all of our shapes and fill it with this pattern. Make sure you have the fill in the front. And then click it here in the swatches panel to apply it. This is way too dark, so we're going to Opacity. Under the drop down, we're going to choose Difference. And then maybe drop down the Opacity to 50%. And this is it. We've created a Pandora's triangle and added some textures to it as well. The tools used were really just the Polygon tool, the Pen tool, and the Pathfinder tools. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please give it a like and leave a comment as well. And subscribe to the channel here on Vector Twist. At the same time, head over to VectorTwist.com and check out the blog for more tutorials, tips, and tricks. I'll see you next time.